San Francisco radar makes some noise. Let me get my get that nice and tall, tall girls. Okay. Um, so it is a delight to be here. Oh my God, such an honor. I love radar. And I have to say, it's just like flashbacks here. I remember back in the 90s when Guillermo Gomez Peña was an artist in residence at La Peña and I was one of the many sort of young, up and coming Latino artists who um, joined in with the residency and we did a workshop with him and it's just amazing taking me back to the last El Nino. Um, and then Shanaka Hodge, whom I've been following throughout this millennium, loving her work and then looking forward to La Chica Boom, uh, to whose religion I was converted at a Mangoes with Chili show sometime back. So just an amazing lineup that I'm thrilled to be part of. And I am going to be reading from my novel. Yay, many years in the making. Um, Uptown Thief, what? It's coming out next month. And thank you. Yes, it's been many years in the making. Um, so I'm going to read you a little description, and then I will read from the book. So this is the description. Marisol Rivera will do whatever it takes to protect her women's health clinic, including bankrolling it with an escort service and a successful series of robberies that target CEOs involved in a sex trafficking scandal. Because sometimes the best donor to a nonprofit is the unintentional donor. Her team includes three fierce women, Taisha, an African-American public health graduate student by day, Kim, the lock whisperer, a petite Korean immigrant, and Kim's girlfriend, Jody, a six foot tall blonde dominatrix. But can they heist a security obsessed billionaire, especially when he doesn't want any of the escorts on the team he wants, the madam? Marisol has sworn off sex work, but the lure of a big score that could ensure the team and the clinic will be set for life is too much to resist. However, in spite of her financial brilliance, she has no way to calculate the risks to her psyche and to her life, especially when she finds herself in danger of falling for an ex-cop involved in the case. Back in high school, he was the crushed out kid brother of her best friend. Now he's grown into the type of tall, tawny Adonis she seeks uptown in Washington Heights for casual hookups. He declares his intentions to be far beyond casual, but is he feeding her info to help her out or to set her up? As the secrets of her sexual past resurface, her perfect plan begins to unravel. Marisol must outwit the central robbery detectives who keep dragging her in for questioning and outrun the vicious hulking pimp who firebombed her clinic and will slit the throat of any woman who defies him. She will need all her Lower East Side street survival skills to save her clinic, her team, and her own skin. So, you see, I'm really going for the drama here. Okay, so the... Um, this is the opening scene, uh, and this is sort of a flashback to the first heist when she and her team sort of unwittingly became a heist team. February, New York City. <coughs> Marisol Rivera ran down the stairwell of the 80-story building, trailing the banister with one hand and gripping the stolen brick of $10,000 cash in the other. The center of the stairwell was open. Three floors above, a door opened, and a security guard pointed down and yelled, There he goes! In her ski mask and bulky black jacket, she had been mistaken for a man, but at closer range, they would see her curves and understand their mistake. Her bare feet thudded down the stairs, pressing off against the concrete steps. She ran for the 57th floor. Taisha was holding an elevator car on the 57th. Numbers flashed by Marisol in the stairwell, 60th, 59th. She heard the boots of the security guards thundering down above her head. Her calf muscles ached and air burned in and out of her lungs. Her heart beat even faster than the rapid fire of her feet against the steps. She had just started down the final flight when another squad of gray uniformed security guards rushed out of the stairwell on the floor below. Had they caught Taisha? Marisol clenched her body to a stop, one hand gripping the banister, and the accumulated forward motion sent her stumbling, almost falling down the stairs. She hurled herself back the way she had come and slammed against the push bar for the 58th floor. As she lunged into the hallway, she heard the chime of the elevator and the door began to open, maybe 10 yards ahead. More guards? Would she be cornered? She ran faster, hoping to... To what? Hit the opposite stairwell? Where could she go? 
but before she could decide, she saw that the figure stepping from the elevator wasn't a guard, but a brown-skinned woman in a green cocktail dress and platform sandals. Taisha, oh, gracias a Dios. Marisol breathed as she peeled off her jacket and ski mask. She balled them up and tossed them into the elevator as her long hair fell over her shoulders. Some of the strands stuck to her forehead and a few ends tangled in the lacy neckline of her red blouse. Hit some buttons, she yelled to Taisha. Send it up. Taisha stabbed the elevator's door close button repeatedly. Marisol pulled her stiletto heels out of her oversized purse and shoved her feet into them. She left the $10,000. The two women stepped back from the elevator as the security guards stormed through the stairwell doors. Please, Marisol begged, looking into the empty elevator. Don't hurt us. The guards rushed closer as the elevator door began to close. Another few feet and they would see it was empty. Step away from the elevator, the security guard yelled. He's got a gun, Taisha shrieked. Wait, Marisol wailed. He might shoot us if you come closer. The guards slowed their progress as the metal doors gradually slid closed. The moment they shut, the two women fell back against the wall, gasping in relief. Oh, thank God, Marisol wiped the perspiration from her face with a handkerchief. As she returned the sodden cloth to her purse, she palmed the brick of cash and stuck it in the waistband of her black silk pants. Five guards approached the pair of women and surrounded them. Marisol shoved her purse back past her hip to hide the cash lump against the base of her spine. One guard was on the radio. Suspect boarded the elevator on the 58th floor headed up. Can you describe the assailant? Another guard asked Marisol and Taisha. Short, stocky build, Taisha said. Maybe he was black. I'm not sure, Marisol disagreed. It was hard to tell in the ski mask. I'm sorry, ma'am, the guard in charge said. We'll need to do a search. He called one of the young guards over. Marisol and Taisha handed over their purses as a voice crackled over the radio. Caught the elevator on 63, nothing but a ski mask and a jacket. A ceiling panel was loose, he must have climbed out. Seal the building for search protocol. The young guard called to his super superior. Purses are clean, the older guard stepped forward. Now we'll do a pat down. We'd like a woman to search us, please, Marisol demanded. The older guard pulled up the radio. I need a female assist on 58 to frisk two suspects. Two hours earlier, Marisol and Taisha had been working in the office when Kim called. Marisol, you'll never believe it, Kim said, her voice thick with tears. We're at the corporate party, but I'm hiding under the CEO's desk. He's a goddamn sex trafficker. He's what? Outrage swelled in Marisol's chest. It took a few minutes to get the story out. Kim and her girlfriend Jody were escorting two clients to the after party of an awards event where the host had been honored for humanitarian efforts in Mexico. But Kim recognized him as one of several CEOs acquitted, despite extensive evidence, in a Mexican sex trafficking scandal. Kim had followed the CEO and slipped into his office where he had locked up the award. After he left, she had tried unsuccessfully to crack the safe. She was sobbing. I can't breathe. I think I'm having a panic attack. I can't go back to the party and pretend everything's okay, but, but what was I thinking? I don't know how to crack a safe. But Marisol knew how. An hour later, she and Taisha snuck into the party, and Kim let her into the CEO's office. Marisol had smoothed Kim's glossy hair from her face and coached her breathing back to normal. Kim was Korean and in her mid-twenties. Marisol had met her when she was a topless waitress at a seedy club. She worked eight hours, gave the occasional blowjob, and didn't have health insurance. Now she worked one night a week and had a 401k. I'm sorry, Kim said. I know these software guys p pay a lot of money. I should have just rolled with it. No, Marisol said, drying the girl's eyes. When you're working and anything goes wrong, you call me, always. Kim nodded and blew her nose. Go back to your date and act like nothing happened, Marisol told Kim. I'll take care of this. Marisol had stolen the award and $10,000. She had almost reached the stairwell when someone yelled for her to stop. On the landing of the 72nd floor, she pulled the ski mask over her face and sprinted down the stairs. She hurled the award down the center of the stairwell. The glass trophy was designed like a map of the world with continents and the CEO's name in 24 karat gold. As it fell tumbling through the air, the stairwell's fluorescent lights glinted off the crystal planes and smooth surfaces of gold. 
70 stories below, it crashed into the marble floor like a meteor, creating a ragged hole, an explosion of fine glass fragments and bits of molten gold shrapnel. On the 58th floor, the head of security returned with a female guard. A blonde bun peeked out beneath the gray uniform cap. As she patted Taisha down, the lead guard asked, what were you two doing on this floor? We were looking for someplace quiet, Taisha said. She's clean, the female guard said of Taisha. We just wanted to be alone, Marisol said, putting her arm around Taisha. Behind their backs, Marisol slid the cash out and handed it to Taisha. The man sneered, no wonder you wanted a woman guard. He pointed at Marisol, step forward. Marisol let the woman pat her down as Taisha slid the cash into her own purse. Marisol felt the woman's gloved hands patting down her body. The guard checked under her hair and ran a hand gently down her back, passing over the spot where the cash had been barely a moment before. Can we go back to the party after this, Marisol said. I need a drink. She's clean too, the female guard said. Party's over, the head guard said. We'll escort you to the ground level where they'll check your IDs. The two women stood flanked by both guards as the elevator descended 57 floors to the lobby. Marisol watched a uniformed guard do a slipshod job of sweeping shards of glass into a dustpan. At the security desk, Marisol and Taisha handed over IDs for Lourdes and Danita, both with Long Island addresses. A guard copied the information, then let them go. As they approached the street door, the guard yelled, wait a minute. Marisol turned around, her heart hammering. You should use the other exit, the guard said. There's broken glass on this end. Don't worry, Marisol said, steering Taisha around the crater in the marble floor. My shoes are invincible. All right. Thank you so much.